Whether you're new to this e-ink market or maybe you're upgrading from a Remarkable 2, there's certainly a lot of things to consider when getting the Remarkable Paper Pro because it is such an expensive device. So we're gonna talk about some of the things you need to consider and some of the competition as well at the end. I've had the Remarkable 1 since 2017 and then I got the Remarkable 2 when it came out. So I kinda wanna talk about some of the things that I was considering when I decided to buy it or not. The way I've spec'd it here, it's 750 and if you're getting more accessories, then it is certainly gonna be well over 800, 850. So it is a steep cost and I think you should really evaluate your needs for note taking and whether the color is really worth it for you. It's by far the best color rendering that you can get on a actual e-ink device. So I'll go into a few kind of sample images here you can see. Here's someone's weekly planner. You can see the colors are nice and vibrant. While we do have color on other devices, like these Kaleido 3 devices, it is not as vibrant. I'll show you a sample here. So you can still make out colors, but they don't pop as much as something like that would. While I still wait for my Remarkable Paper Pro to come, I've been really evaluating all the content out there, and it does seem like the kind of slow refreshes and the snappiness of the color changes is the biggest drawback of the actual color tech here. And then with the screen as well, it's important to understand that the actual PPI did not really change much. It only went from 226 to 229. So if you're thinking that the Remarkable Paper Pro is gonna be a way sharper screen, it is not. It's nothing like a 300 PPI device like this in terms of the crispness. But it's, you know, something, it's a trade-off for the color technology they're using. So it's perfectly understandable that it didn't really increase that much. And for software scaling between the RM2 and the RM Paper Pro, it makes sense that they kind of kept the PPI similar. Pretty straightforward in terms of the contrast, it is not gonna be as good as a Remarkable 2. Now, one of the benefits here is that they did add a front light and surprisingly, they actually reduced the distance to the paper for the stylus, which Typically, we've seen front lights increase that distance because you're adding another layer. But my guess is because they didn't add a Wacom layer, we'll get into the stylus a little bit more, but because they didn't add a Wacom layer, that probably allowed them to reduce the overall distance of the pen to paper. So there actually isn't really much of a trade-off here for the front light at all. It's mostly a positive. The only thing I've seen is it doesn't get the brightest. Like the Kindle Scribe, for example, gets like blindingly bright. <laughs> so I don't really think that you need something that bright when you're using it in like the pitch black or really dark scenarios. This is gonna be adequate for what you need. One downside of this front light is because it is not as bright and it doesn't have an auto light sensor, I think it's actually easy to forget that the light is on and you are gonna have bigger battery draw at that point when you don't realize that. If you're out in broad daylight and you have it full maxed out, it's not gonna be noticeable and you're gonna consume much more battery. But it does have a much bigger battery by about 2000 milliamp hours, so not the biggest deal because these do have very good battery life to begin with. And then with the screen, like the 11.8 seems kind of like a sweet spot the Remarkable 2 here is 10.3. This V Woods AI paper is 10.65, which is a nice kind of size too. But this is smaller than the A4 size, which is around 13 inches and can be perhaps a little bit unwieldy, but really nice for real estate. So this is kind of like a nice sweet spot in between those sizes. The last thing is potentially the improved feel of the screen. They said they've worked on the rougher glass texture, which makes it feel more papery or like scratchy, you know? And the new tips of the active stylus go hand in hand with that texture. And that leads us into the active stylus. Now, it's finally nice because like this, there is now a place to put your stylus. Like the Remarkable 2, I have lost this thing so many times. Most of the times I've found it, but there have been times when I was not able to find it because it always falls out when you're putting it in and out of a bag, or if it just gets knocked, it'll just fly off. So that is good, and they even have a clever little system where it wraps around the back, so you don't have to have it there if you don't want it. I've talked a little bit more about this device in the live reaction I did, so you can check that out too if you want. Now another thing to consider is the stylus. So it is now an active stylus versus a passive stylus, 
And so if you're someone that has like had e-ink devices before and you have like a collection of pens, you are simply not gonna be able to use any of them on here. For example, I like these Supernote pens so much that I put Feel Right 2, which is, if you're not aware, it's like a kind of screen protector that Supernote has proprietarily made and it gives a really good paper-like feel. So I put that on here so that I can now use metallic tips on the actual device and not have it scratch the screen. And you know, so I have a host of these pens that I can use, even my standard Remarkable stylus, I switched a titanium tip on and it's, it's just a nice kind of feel on the Remarkable 2, but that is not gonna be really possible on the Remarkable Paper Pro. So that's something to note. And Kit was doing um, some content on it and he found that it works with the USI Active Stylus standard. The USI standard tends to be the sort of cheaper standard of note-taking stylus. But I will reiterate that for basic note-taking, it's really good. And the cheapest styluses that I was sort of playing about with, they didn't look half as good as the Remarkable Pro. So I wouldn't get this and go and think, well, I don't need a marker. I'll go and get a uh, USI stylus and, and just look there as well. The Marker Plus is 50 bucks more than the Marker. It remains to be seen if you're going to be able to get cheaper aftermarket pens that have the same kind of quality as the Remarkable ones. They also have proprietary tips. So when you buy an extra tip, you're going to have to buy that from Remarkable and chances are they're not going to be the cheapest. And then another thing is like these are not really pro level pens. Like I actually enjoy pens that feel like pens. These are really just styluses and they could have easily added a button for like a highlighting tool or something, but they didn't. So in, in terms of like the actual marker, nothing really changed from the remarkable ones, except for the fact that it now has a battery, which is another thing you need to consider also over time. If you have this thing for five years plus, that battery could degrade over time. And we still don't know if this is replaceable. You can replace it yourself or if it's just gonna become like e-waste when the battery dies and it's super hard to replace. So that's something I can't comment on yet because no one's really done a teardown of one of these, but I'm sure people will soon. So if, uh, if someone does that, I'll, I'll link it down, down in the description. Also, they really should have added a fingerprint sensor like the VWoods AI has here. And then with the type folio, one of the benefits now is that, let me flip it around here for you. One of the benefits now is that it is larger. So because the RM Paper Pro is bigger, the keyboard actually becomes larger as well. And that will be a more comfortable typing experience. That is something that I'll show you right here. They added an update recently, I noticed, where when I start typing, typing test on the RM2, on the RM2, and then now you actually have the option. If I go here, I can go wide column or narrow column. So it used to only be narrow and now you can actually expand it a little more, which is, is nice. I'll talk a little bit uh, more about the kind of software updates here. And this kind of leads me into my next point about Remarkable in general. They are pretty slow to update things. The two examples I can think of here is like, if you actually expect people to use this in a professional setting, the Typefolio, and like maybe you're a writer and you want to share it with your editor, there is no built-in spell check here. That is a very basic thing that should be uh, something that's here. And there's no like live sync, so you can't sync it with an editor. So basically it's just a glorified typewriter. I like it for that. Like it's really good for script writing for just myself but I'm not really sharing it with anyone. I'm just doing it myself and I can live edit. I can show you an example of that. So when I'm writing a script, I can then like mark up changes and kind of have that for myself. But the sharing aspect is not something that's, that's there. And like this right here, having two pen tools where you can customize them each differently You'll never guess how long that took. I've been using the Remarkable 1, the Remarkable 2 since they came out. And this is a feature that they added like a couple months ago. So that literally took seven years for them to add that. I don't know if it's their like 
process of vetting things, but everything takes a long time to come out and they're remarkable. And the implementation and updates every time are very minuscule. I've talked to Kit about this that in some senses, the remarkable getting updated slowly might feed better into the user experience because mm -hmm. if you've had it for four years since it came out, like you've slowly seen these things and you've probably put them to memory better. Yeah. You know, the new things like one of the new things I use on the remarkable bunch now is the, um, the line snapping feature, but that was added in maybe like oh, yeah. a software two software pushes ago. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's just all those little things. Like I, I just remember now because there's only like one or two big updates every time the, you know, uh, last time when we had, uh, talked about the remarkable, I think they had just added the, the kind of Android feature where you can select text and like choose the end point and stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> which is, yeah, a little late to the yeah. game, but it's like one, what, when a new feature comes to the remarkable, you're very aware of it, I think. And that makes you kind of want to use it more. And then it makes it easier to remember because there aren't that many. Right. Yeah. yeah. True. Interesting. You know, that is a very interesting discussion. I, I hope you sort of all in the audience sort of take that uh, for what it is. Now, one of the benefits is the app on Remarkable. I think their implementation of the app is the best out of all these devices that I've tried. Supernote does have it as well but there's some inconsistencies between the phone and the desktop and the uh, app on the, the lap on a laptop. Remarkable is very streamlined. I still don't know why you can't edit stuff with a pen, like on my phone. If I pull out the pen, I can't do it there. But on the downside, there is a Connect subscription, which is $2.99 a month, which is not crazy expensive, but that does add up over time if you're owning this device for five years. So also something you need to consider in the remarkable ecosystem generally. So talking about the competition, really quickly in this image, you can see that the implementation of color is very good. I think this is without the front light, then this is with it on. So it's vibrant, it pops, has good change of gradation between colors. It's definitely like groundbreaking for the e-ink space of how good it looks of just like the pure raw colors but like the snappiness of how it refreshes and, and how it updates when you are actually drawing on it is something that has some work to be done. I would recommend watching Kit's live stream if you haven't seen it. He did one yesterday where he answered everyone's questions and was very, very thorough. There are Kaleido 3 devices like this that look really good in my opinion. Like I enjoy reading comics on this. I'm sure it'd be better on the Remarkable Paper Pro and. I'm, I'm looking forward to actually kind of testing that stuff when it does come out and comparing, you know, from like the real life stuff to Kaleido 3 to then uh, Remarkable Paper Pro, for example, and seeing how good it looks in comparison. So stay tuned for that. But then there are things like this V Woods AI paper that just came out. And this has a Carta 1300 screen, which is kind of the best in the black and white tech right now. And the contrast and the blacks look amazing. The blacks on the Remarkable Paper Pro are not as good. It's the people, some people say it's almost more of like a dark blue, but I think that's a little bit of an exaggeration. It does look relatively black, but it, the contrast is gonna be nowhere near something like Carta 1300. I did a video on this uh, last week, so you can check that out if you wanna see the kind of the latest in the black and white tech but there's a lot of competition coming out now. This has AI built into it. It's, I mean, it's kind of wild. Like I was drawing a house and look, I can actually analyze the content and it'll just spit out a report of like what is on the page, which is, I mean, this is a distraction free device and like a focus device, but this is just like a neat feature. I mean, you can see the image seems to depict a structural architectural design, possibly a floor plan or an isometric drawing of a building or space, structural layout. So I'm still digging into the AI aspects of this, but just for things like shape snapping, line snapping, where you can do more advanced features on it, it just makes a lot of sense and it is much more powerful and the books devices, you can use any Android app. But then you have like things like the Supernote where the structure and the organization is just super well thought out. And I'm of the opinion where like, I'm 
definitely excited to try the Remarkable Paper Pro because I think it'll be really cool for things like drawing. In terms of my note taking, I don't think that color is that useful. In my opinion, there's no amount of color that you can add to one of these e-ink devices that will give you the organizational power that the Supernote Nomad has with keywords, linking to documents, the digest feature where you can have PDFs and you just have digested information of things you highlight in it, table of contents, keywords, searchable OCR that's done in the background. So the competition is really strong and the Remarkable Paper Pro is definitely best in its category for this color note taking aspect. The books devices have you know Android and all that and are, are, are just more productivity workhorses. It's a really cool device, but these are kind of the things I think you need to think about when, when considering if it's useful or not. Because if you just want color, Kaleido 3 is generally a faster color e-ink experience in general. And it's like 50%, 75% as good. Anyways, my remarkable uh, Paper Pro will be arriving, I think next week when I'm out of town. So I'll be making some content on it after that, but stay tuned. And if you wanna check out my remarkable playlist, you can see that here. Thanks for watching.